Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to Wednesday, the 3rd of February's Literacy Lesson. Right, this week we have been uh, researching two animals from the Galapagos Island. Today we are going to start writing our non-chronological report, so that is the learning objective. So, first things first, please can you open your book and write the date, Wednesday the 3rd of February on the right-hand side, and the learning objective to write a non-chronological report. And then underneath that, just do spag. Make sure, please, it's after your yesterday's piece of work. And there are no pages missing in between. Okay, don't worry about this bit. Just pause the video while you write both those things. Right, so just a reminder that the video and all the links can be found on the Year 6 blog on our website. Uh, make sure you click on the Y6 activities and look for Wednesday the 3rd of February Home Learning. The links will have also been emailed to your parents' email accounts, should you need them. Right, so first off, today in SPAG then, we're going to look at expanding a fact. So it's very, very easy with a non-chronological report to research all our facts, like we did the other day in our book, and then just to write each fact again in our non-chronological report. Well, we don't want to do that. We want to make sure our facts are linked and expanded on. So, for example, what that means is I've got two facts here. Marine iguanas sneeze to get rid of excess salt, and then I've got underneath, they feed on algae and seaweed in the ocean. So what I would need to do is combine those two facts so that they explain each other, expand on each other, if you like. So I can do, I could maybe do something along the lines of marine iguanas sneeze to get rid of excess salt. This is because they feed on algae and seaweed in the ocean, but that is very stunted. And I could, they feed on algae and seaweed in the oceans because of this marine iguanas sneeze to get rid of excess salt. Again, you kind of can't really do it like that. What you've kind of got to do is know that there's two facts here. They have iguanas sneeze to get rid of salt. They get the salt in the first place because they feed in, on algae and seaweed in the ocean, and the ocean is obviously salty. So how would I write that as an expanded fact? Well, underneath your, your spag here, I would maybe start, so we can go with earlier, uh, so earlier on in the week we did conjunction openers, so I might start uh, with one of those. So, actually I'm going to start with an adverb opener, and I'm going to go with unusually, because I quite like that. Now the iguana, the marine iguana, is the only species of iguana that feeds in the ocean, so I'd be playing on that unusually. Uh, actually, now let's get rid of it, let's go with amazingly. Amazingly, the marine iguana feeds entirely in the ocean on algae and seaweed. Full stop. Now, the next part is the excess salt bit, isn't it? So I'm going to start with a conjunction. Because of this, the iguanas ingest, so that means that they eat too much salt. So they sneeze it out in their snot. <laughs> go on. Okay, so let's go back and have a look. So feed on algae and seaweed, well we've mentioned that, and then sneezing to get rid of excess salt, well we mentioned that. So let's read it out again. Amazingly, the marine iguana feeds entirely in the ocean on algae and seaweed. Because of this, the iguanas ingest too much salt, so they sneeze it out in their snot. So I've kind of re- reworded and rewrote both of those facts so that they explain each other okay so now i would like you to do the same thing so you've got some facts here about penguins you've got three facts all together penguins are very clumsy on land but swift in water penguins hunt small and fast swimming fish far out to sea penguins have lots of predators like seals and sharks so with the first two these two facts mention the word swift and fast swimming fish. 
Well, penguins aren't good on land, but they're very quick in water. So would they use that speed to catch fish? And again, this speed, would they use it to outrun predators? What I'd like you to do is write these three facts all together as one, like I did, underneath your learning objective where it says spag. Okay, pause the video while you do this. Right, okay then. So we should have done that now. Today we are going to write, start writing our non-chronological report. All right, so you've got a must, should, could that should be in your little booklet here, right at the very bottom. It might be a very good idea to have this out and present while you are writing so you can see what you need to include. So for our writing today, I'm looking for the correct use of capital letters, full stops, exclamation and question marks, and the use of subheadings to organise our work. It's going to get very confused if we don't use subheadings. Uh, should be using, and this is what I would like to see from the vast majority of you, is an adverb and conjunction opener, and then the use of technical vocabulary from the non-chronological report. So an example of this uh, technical vocabulary will be the word ingest that I just used. We could be explaining our facts with sentences, uh, with your own sentences, so not just rewriting a list of facts, actually explaining them and looking for ways to link them, and then using conjunctions to extend those. Okay. Uh, first, though, we need a heading and a short introduction about the islands themselves, and the introduction needs to mention the unique animals that live on the island. So, just to remind us again, the Galapagos Islands are an archipelago or a group of islands that have been created by volcanoes, found in the Pacific Ocean about 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers from the coast of Ecuador in South America, right on the equator. And then give us some more information about what the islands are like. So lots of different types of plants and animals, and very unusual animals as well. Uh, giant tortoises, marine iguanas, and the Galapagos penguins, to name three of them. Um, and the, the islands have been made famous because in 1835, Charles Darwin visited there and, and came up with his theory of evolution and natural selection. Okay, so that's uh, what I've kind of gone with. So I've, I've written one here. Uh, so my heading, and you can see my book there, just on the other page, heading right at the top and in the middle, I've just chosen to call my animals of the Galapagos Islands, but you can choose your own heading, it's entirely up to you. Uh, and then I've given a short introduction here. The Galapagos Islands are a small group of islands located a thousand kilometers east of Ecuador. Famously, they are known across the world, adverb opener, everybody, they are known across the world as the place where Charles Darwin devised his theory of natural selection and evolution. He did this by studying the island's magnificent and unique animals. So we've mentioned the animals there. Animals which still attract thousands of tourists and scientists each year. Here are two of the most remarkable. So what I'd like you to do, using the information off here, just very quickly, it only needs to be three lines, four lines, no more than five, please. Just write a very short introduction about the Galapagos Islands. Pause the video while you do this. Okay, so in your book, we should not by now have the heading and the very short introduction there. Okay, so next thing that we need to do is look at our plan about the first animal that we did on Monday. So you need your Monday facts. Uh, mine was all about the Galapagos penguin. Okay, uh, so what you need to do, rather than just go straight into the physical appearance, is give us a little bit of a small introduction and, of course, write the separate heading on the Galapagos penguin. So I'm going to keep jumping between these, this page now and the visualizer. Okay, so we've got the Galapagos penguin. Let me write that there and underline it. There we go. So one of the island's most unique Creatures is the Galapagos penguin. 
and then I'm going to refer to uh, what the I'm going to refer to it being clumsy on land and swift in the water. Uh, so, oh, actually, I'm, they're found across all the islands. So, found across all the islands. Comma, waddling across the volcanic rocks. Or swiftly swimming. through the ocean waves. You can count on seeing the cheeky and curious Galapagos penguin. Just a little bit, just a little bit of uh, an introduction for it, and then underneath, I'm going to write physical characteristics. That's my first subheading for it. Characteristics. There we go. Physical characteristics. So now I'm going to switch back to my plan and just remind myself of its physical characteristics. There. So it's up to 20 inches long. Um, it's the smallest species of South American penguins, 5.5 pounds, it's got it's black on the head with black and back with white markings on the head, belly and underside of the flippers, and they can live for 15 to 20 years. And I've got a couple of things on natural predators there that we don't need to really include on that there. I'm just going to distinctly remember something, oh yeah, and the, there was that about the bill, wasn't there? Mm. Oh, and the females being smaller than males. Right, so let's jump back then. Now, with all that information, so we don't really want to start with an adverb opener because there's nothing amazing about being, or you know, uniquely or about being 20 inches long. So I'm going to start with, did you know? Did you know? The Galapagos penguin is the smallest of the South American penguins. Penguins, making sure I put my question mark. Actually, no, let's get rid of that. Weighing only 4.4 to 8 pounds and measuring up to 20 inches. Okay, so did you know the Glasgow penguin is the smallest of the, ah, oh, the smallest of the smallest of the South American penguins? <laughs> Dear me. Smallest of the South American penguins, weighing only 4.4 to 8 pounds and measuring up to 20 inches, making sure I've got my question mark at the end there. So let's have a look at the facts again. So we've kind of covered all of those three in one there. Oh, I've gone completely off the wrong page. This wonderfully, so I'm going to write about its coat now. This wonderfully majestic marine bird has black plumage. Remember that's feathers, so getting that technical vocabulary in there. On its head and back, sorry, head, back, and flippers, and has distinctive 
So that means different white markings. Or actually, let's say white plumage. And where is the white plumage? Let's remind ourselves. So on on its head, stomach. Oh, actually, let's change that to torso. And on the underside of its flippers. So I don't know, he's twenty like now he needs to write something about his age really. That's maybe amazing that I wouldn't have thought a penguin would have lived up to twenty years. Amazingly. This now we need to make a comment really. So we could put this penguin can live up to twenty can live in the wild up to twenty years old. But like put this long lived yeah this long lived animal can survive up to twenty years survive for up to 20 years in the wild. Imagine having a 20 year old penguin. Never would have thought that. Okay. Uh, right, so now we've done the physical characteristics part, I think I'm probably going to leave that there. Um, and then move on to habitat. All right. So that's what you need to do first, start off with its physical appearance. When you've finished that, you've finished your characteristic there. Now, as you can see at the bottom, I've only got a, a very, very small amount. So I'm just going to move the keyboard out of the way. I've only got a very, very small amount, and there's little point in me starting a subhead from there. So I'm just going to turn over, and then I'd write habitat at the top of the next page. Okay? Right. So, find my ruler. Again, what I would like you to do now, that's all the writing I'm going to show you. Um, so what you need to do is look at your plan and like we've just done like we've just done on my first page there, look at writing all these facts and using them in a way to explain each fact. Okay, it's uh, physical characteristics is quite easy to do. Uh, do you know what, actually, I'll probably will show you in, uh, in habitat. Okay, so looking at habitat then, well, these penguins are the only penguins to live on the equator. All the penguins live towards the South Pole. Um, yeah, and Antarctica there. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So, starting off with habitat, I'm just going to remind myself of my must, should and could in here. I'm not going to look now. I've got my adverb opener in. I'm going to try and see if I can get a conjunction opener in. And we've got the technical vocabulary and the subheadings to organise. We've got the capital letters, question marks, and full stops. Really, we're looking to explain these facts in this section. So let's have a look at these. So I'm going to start off with most penguins. live in the southern hemisphere hemisphere extremely far south south or live on the freezing continent of Antarctica Antarctica. And now I'm going to. Write. So that's started off uh, about most penguins. Now obviously, we know the Galapagos penguin is different. Okay, it doesn't live near the south, it lives bang on the equator. <laughs> the Galapagos penguin penguin is different. stop and now I'm going to repeat that so the Galapagos penguin is different 
I'm going to start the next sentence with different because because it lives on the equator on the equator in an archipelago of islands islands in both the southern and northern hemisphere now I should have uh, put that different because it lives on the equator I'm going to put in brackets after equator the hottest place on Earth. So I've just had to squeeze that in above there. So the Galapagos penguin is different because it lives on the equator, the hottest place on Earth, in an archipelago of islands in both the southern and northern hemisphere. So I've explained that, uh, that fact there. Uh, and I'm trying to put a little bit of uh, my own personal style of writing on it there. Um, now let's have a look at the rest of this. Now, I could put a bit about it being an endemic species as well. So, and right, I'm going to try and combine that endemic species bit there and then about how the birds migrate around the island. So, underneath, I might, I'm going to leave in a little paragraph now. So, this endemic species and then I'm going to put in brackets only found in the Galapagos Islands actually I'm going to change this endemic species to these endemic birds these endemic marine birds a few more the um, scientific vocab there. These endemic marine birds, only found in the Galapagos Islands, have um, migrate around the islands depending on the time of year. Now I'm going to do a, a colon now. I'm going to put a little bullet point list. All right, just to give it something different. So as you can see there, during the wet season, they're on Isabella Islands where the water is cooler. So let's write that in. During the wet season, These birds can be found on Isabella Island where the waters are cooler and the food oh actually let's change that and there is a plentiful food supply. Full stop. All right, and then I put my other little bullet point. So let's go back. Where can they be found during the dry season? So during the dry season, they can they migrate to Barcelona and Santa Fe. Oh, let's change that back again. During the dry season, comma, they can be found in the cooler waters of Santa Fe and Bartolome. There we go. 
Right, so a little bit on habitat there. Uh, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it there because we've got 25 minutes on this video. So what I'd like you to do is you would write about your um, animal that you wrote about on uh, Monday, that you researched on Monday. So you need to, as I've done it in my book, not just rewrite the facts. I'm not looking for a rewritten list of facts. I'm looking for your style of writing. Okay. Remember, this purpose is to inform. So we want to keep your language really formal and not too personal. And this would be the wrong kind of writing to try and make it humorous. Okay. Um, so what you need to do now is you need to write your section on the Galapagos penguin about its physical appearance, its habitat. And once you've done that, behavior and communication, feeding habits, fast facts, or whatever your subheadings were from your research the other day. Okay. Um, when you've finished, I'll leave this up. This is where you might want to pause the video. Um, what I would like you to do is read your whole non-chronological report out loud, check for writing errors and that everything makes sense, capital letters and at the start of the sentences, and for any name of places or any name, so like Galapagos, for example, needs to be a capital G, and then check full stops, exclamation and question marks. If you use did you know at the end of that sentence, no matter how long it is, it needs to be a question mark. Okay, right. Thank you, Year 6. I'll see you tomorrow for writing part 2.